Welcome back kids and happy 2024. I hope y'all had a good Christmas and New Year's. I know I sure did. Took a little time off and uh, rested a little bit. Now I'm ready to get back to work. Today's project is a 60 inch by 12 inch sign. And since my Elite Foreman is has a 48 by 48 cutting area, I have to cut this sign in tile. Uh, and if you've never did that before, I think you're going to find this video very useful. I tried to cover every, every aspect of the process. I've did several of these tile cut projects in the past. Uh, but this is the first one I've done with my Onefinity. And uh, it turned out great. I didn't have any problems at all. Uh, I love working with the Masso. That... There's just so many things about this machine and the controller that I just love and uh, it makes so much difference uh, compared to my previous machines. So if you're on the fence about getting one of these, take it from me and thousands of other people. You cannot beat this setup. It is just incredible. So without further ado, let's get on to the project and see how I do this. All right, I've got my workpiece up here on the machine. You can see it's much longer than my uh, wasteboard. <clears throat> so we're going to cut this in tiles. And in order to do that, I'm going to position it where it's not going to be over the top of my tool setter for sure. So I'm either going to be on this side of it or this side of it. I think I'm going to work from over here. I need to take that chewed up old uh, fence off of there anyway. It needs to be replaced. So kill two birds with one stone here. So let's get that thing off of there. Got the fence off of there. Yep, sins from my past. Uh, got a lot of screw holes here. If you run your finger over those, they're kind of some of them are raised. I try to keep those shaved down, but since that fence is not on there right now, this would be a good chance for me to just shave that down and get that back level. this board on here. Scoots are over here where it's going to be. We're going to be on the left of the tool setter here. And the reason being, let's just say if I started out and I set it up to cut here, that's fine for the first tile, which is I think 29 and a half inches. But once that first half is cut, the first tile is cut, then this whole thing will have to be slid down this way. Then I no longer have access to the tool setter. So that's that's a no-no. So that's why we're gonna work on this side right here. We'll have access to this no matter what. And now I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at from this angle. All right, so this is the first tile cut I've did on this new machine. And I'm already seeing how much simpler this is going to be than it was before. Mainly because of my grid pattern. But also, you know, if you don't have a grid and you have the T-tracks, you can use those too. But that is something perfect to line up on. And make sure that you're straight where you want to be. But I've just got that one set. That edge is right on that line. And that way... After the first tile, when I slide this down, I know all I have to do is keep it 
on that line for the second top. I'm going to get this thing secured down and then we're going to go to work. Just going to drill a couple screw holes here on the end and on the outside. This board is 14 and a quarter inches wide. My final piece is going to be 12 inches wide. So I've got these outer, outer one inch to uh, screw into. And I'll come back after the car and clean all that up. Go get those down there on that end. All right, I've got it secured down, and I went ahead and put a uh, straight edge over here, and I've just got it screwed down. It, it is right on that line on the grid. Of course, it's attached back there at the back, and right beside it, you can see the hole where that screw is. Got a screw there, and on uh, both corners here down here. This right here, is going to be uh, where I set my corner. This is one inch in from the edge and the end. So that's where I'm going to zero my X and Y. All right, coming at you from a different angle over here. I've made my mark here. This is the one I just showed you in the previous clip. That is my X, Y. And it is one inch in from the end and it's one inch in from this edge. I know my tile is 29 and a half inches long, so I need another one of these 29 and a half inches down this board. So, since I know I'm in one inch there, actually, I will make my mark at 30 and a half, which I have right here. There's my 30 and a half, and I went ahead and measured in one inch from the edge here, which really wasn't necessary, but I did it anyway, just for demonstration purposes. But yeah, then you gotta have this. This is your next X, Y. Once we move this down for the second tile, this is where we're gonna set the X, Y. All right, we're in VCAR Pro. I've already got the design laid out on my workpiece here. And we'll just do a real quick review. Uh, we're 60 inches wide, 12 inches tall. My workpiece is actually 14 inches tall, and it's like 65 inches long. But I'm going to cut that down. I left the extra uh, two inches on the width so I could safely uh, screw the workpiece down to my spool board. Uh, anyway, we're uh, zeroing bottom left, just like always. That's pretty straightforward. All right, now let's look in here. I want to show you something. All of this is V card. On this first line, the coffee line here, I'm going to use a 90 degree groovy genie. I'm running a flat depth of 0 0.2, and I've played with this. I've uh, I even tried letting it just run it without a flat depth, but it was going way too deep because uh, this is, uh, these letters are like five and a half inches tall and those wide parts there are really wide. So anyway, it just wasn't going to work out right, I don't think. I didn't want to risk it. So we're going with a flat depth of 0.2 and nothing else spectacular. So let's just close that. But uh, here's what I want to show you. This is the projected time of the cut. And this is just an estimate. Uh, you can play with these numbers down here and try to get it close, but I've never been able to dial it in where it, this is accurate on every project. So I just leave it with this and it's, it's a good ballpark figure. But anyway, you can see the total machining time is 36 minutes, 48 seconds. That's for both uh, the coffee and the bottom line down here. If I go back and 
into the coffee line and let's add a clearance tool which I think is going to be a quarter inch downtown genie select that recalculate and okay now remember we were at 38 minutes before total car time now we're down to 22 so just running that clearing pass with the end mill knocked 16 minutes off of that carb time that's pretty substantial and so yeah it's definitely worth at least exploring that on your projects if you're running v cars especially if they're bigger lettering or designs uh, that have some thick areas you're probably going to be a whole lot faster just to run a uh, end mill uh, uh, clearing pass before you actually run the VBA. Now down here on the bottom line, the Christ offers forgiveness, and yes, he does. This is also a V cut, V carve, and I'm using a 60 degree here. I use a 90 degree up here, a 60 up here. The reason being, I use the uh, wider, eh, shallower uh, cut angle up here on these because these were so wide and then I tested it I ran this line also with the 90 degree but in with this particular font like these real thin areas right here it was not uh, carving very deep with the 90 degree so I switched it to a 60 degree and it, it works great so let's just look at this uh, yeah no flat depth 60 degree let me close that out. And we'll, let me turn this off and show you. See, even down there in that thin area, the S, you can see, look here, the little feet down on the bottom of the letters. That's going deep enough to where it's not going to be a problem when I go to sand the paint off of it. So, so yeah, that all looks good. I'm real happy with that. I'll show you what it's going to look like with the coloring with the black letters. It's a simple design. You know, we've got uh, three tool pass, two tools. So, yeah, it shouldn't take long. How long did it say? 22 minutes, so about 23 minutes. And I think that's pretty much everything I needed to explain. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, it's not. Now we got to get to the tiling part. All right, this is uh, 60 inches long. My machine is 48 by 48. So, I got to cut this in two tiles. So here's how we do that. Highlight all of this. Let's close that out. And right here is your uh, tile tool pass tool. And we're going to tile it. We're going to have to feed it through the Y because we can't feed it through the X because I'm only 48 inches wide. But I'm practically unlimited going this direction so we're going to do it with a y and i've got my tiles heights set at 29 and a half inches and i'll show you why here in just a second but let me exit out of this and let's straighten up this uh this sign first thing we got to do is go back in here and i always design with the uh project horizontally or any like that just because it's easier for me to tell how everything's laid out and that's how it's going to look when it's hanging on the wall or whatever so that's why i always start out like this but then it's no problem to switch it around so we're at 60 and 12 so let's just reverse those numbers 12 60 don't have to change anything else our uh, xy has not changed we're going to okay that so then to move this up here on on the workpiece highlight it we need to rotate it right here rotate selected objects we'll go 90 degrees and i'll have to hit it a few times oh got it on the first try hey i'll take that all right so move this up here so i can see what i'm doing so we're going to move it over here on the workpiece all you got to do is get it close. Then, 
we can use our alignment tool align to material we just want to center it up to begin with so that looks pretty good let me turn these off down here but i actually i want to move this down just a hair so let me close that we're through we're squared up uh, x and y or in this case <laughs> y and x okay so close that zooming in a little bit i just want to bring this down just a little bit what i'm watching is the lower parts of these letters you got a y there and a g down here that uh, hangs down below everything else so that's this is really what i'm watching so i just want to make sure i keep plenty of room in here i want to leave about an inch or or at least an inch so let's see what i got there 0.95 that is close enough and i had already earlier kind of set the spacing between the coffee line and this line so I'm real happy with the way that is. So now let's save this thing. We got to go back in our tiles. Let's highlight everything. Again. Go back in our tiles. We're going to turn them on. We're feeding through the Y. And uh, my tile height, I've got it set at 29 and a half inches. I mean, my sign is 60 inches. So why didn't I just go 30 inches? But I'm fixing to show you why. If I went 30, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll make each tile 30 inches. Well, when I do that, it runs into the edge of this big F here and also the small F down here. And, you know, you, you can do this. Let's just say, for example, it cut this right in half and there was no, no way I could do anything different. It would still work. The way I've got my straight edge set, I'm going to be able to slide that board perfectly. It's not going to vary at all uh, in the X direction. So, but anyway, if you can get away from doing this, don't do it. If you can avoid it, don't do this. Don't split any letter in half. Because then if you do make a mistake and you're off just a fraction, it's going to show right there. So the safe thing to do is in this case, I went 29 and a half. Now watch what happens when I update my tiles. Oh, let me back out first, show you. Right there, we have two tiles. There's the first one, there's the second one. You can tell this one's kind of grayed out because that's the one we're working with. Let me zoom back in here. So I've changed that from 30 to 29.5. When I update, you'll see it dropped the split between tile one and tile two is now here in an open area. There's, it's not touching anything. So even if I was off, you know, a fraction, an eighth of an inch or so, uh, it's not going to be noticeable. Whereas if you're splitting a letter or whatever, and you're off a little bit, it's going to tell on you. So sometimes you can't avoid it, but when you can't avoid it, I suggest that you do. Do, do what I just did right here. Try to put your uh, splits somewhere in an open area where it's not cutting anything in half. So we've got that. Now let's uh, hide tiling manager. And it's time to save this thing. So let's highlight all of those. Well, I guess we could reset the preview. Let's do this first. Everything's highlighted. Going to recalculate. Everything's successful. Now we can uh, look at our new project. Perfect. That's what we want. And we know it's going to split right here. One thing I didn't show you that I should have. Let's go back here. Go back into the tiling. By doing this at 29 and a half, it actually made us have three tiles. There's one little bitty one up here which we'll just ignore that. There's nothing in that section, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we could we could cut this into four tiles if we wanted to. It don't, you know, just whatever. But anyway, 
this one worked out to where that split is in an open area and this third tile there's nothing in there anyway you can see the t3 that's your tile number three and you can also highlight each individual tile section so right now this grayed out looking one is tile one that's where we're looking at if we move it to tile two then it grays out this one and you can see right in there is the t2 same thing for the t3 which is that little bitty section up here that is irrelevant but that's just the way it worked out and no biggie let's move this back to t1 29.5 that's all correct we're ready to save this thing all right let's go over here and save these saving all visible tool paths into one file i can do that because i have a tool setter and if you don't shame on you you're making your life a whole lot harder than it has to be uh, output tile tile tool paths that was automatically checked because we chose that this was going to be a tile tool path earlier there's our three uh, bits or three tool paths that all looks good we're going to save it and it's just a coffee demo saving it in a file i call demo that's just for this video let's save that all right now that i've saved that let's go back in there and uh, look at this all right now you can see there's three files in here. We got the Coffee Demo CRV file, which is just the uh, VCAR Pro. You got to have that to open it back up later. And here we have two different G code files Tile 1 and Tile 2. We'll just run, the, run these in that order. And, uh, and, if, and even though we actually had three tiles that including that little tiny one up at the very top of the board there was nothing in there so there was no g-code needed to be generated for that so that's why we only have g-codes for tile one and tile two there was nothing in tile three so that's the reason for that let's get out of that lasso link and let's send these jokers over there. There's the Coffee One demo right there. Send file. And one of these days it will get that over there. I don't know why this is running slow. These are small files. I had a guy comment the other day saying it was because my files were so large, but this is not a large file. And that should zip over there in. You know less than two seconds so if any of y'all out there know why this is running slow for all of a sudden it's been doing this the past two or three projects uh, let me know uh, what what i can do to speed that back up you know let's get tile two we'll send it over there drag and drop tile two send file okay we're ready to go over to the masso and wait on that to show up and get our settings done all right let's open up the masso folder there's our two uh, g code files we're going to run tile one first load all right now we need to set our x and y Normally, I, this is the point where I would just switch it to the G55 and go on about my business, but I can't do that now because I'm not using the uh, exact same location for the XY. So we got to do this manually. So let's go over to the machine and do that. All right, I'm going to be using my MPG pendant to set my XY. So let's just run it over here in the X direction. Down here in the wire. Lower our Z. Uh, this is where we can get tricky. Lower it a little bit. I'm going to move it. 
move the camera just a little bit closer. down those numbers for the X and the Y, so 5.46.4. And that's what we're going to use to set our offset, so. Offset, this is just an old test one that I had did. So, I can delete or override it without any problem, so that's going to be 5. Point four six one four and the Y three point four eight. So. All right, so now that's my G fifty six. Now to set that up here, there's my. Currently at the G54, which is just the default. So I can go here, go into my probing over here, and then just tap the G56. That changed it up there. Now it knows that's where our XY is going to be for the entirety of this project. So let's just test that and make sure. Just run the machine out here. And then I'm just going to go to my F2 and go to work origin. Let me bring you over here. And it should run right back there. Bingo. Perfection. Alright, all we gotta do now is set our Z. Let's do this. We're at the work origin, which is the XY for this part for this project is the G56. Rewind. Cycle start. We'll go over here and measure the bit. Well, it's telling me to load the tool, which I've already did that. The quarter inch compression jenny is what I ended up using. Man glitter. Thank you all for staying with me this far into the video. If you feel like this content is uh, beneficial to you, if you're learning anything, picking up new ideas, please give me a like. Uh, I would sure appreciate it, and that helps uh, my channel more than you could ever know. And if you haven't already subscribed, that this would be a great time to do that too. So thank you all for watching, and let's get back to the car. All right, time to change that bit. Also, if you have any questions or comments, 
leave them down below. I always read them and I respond to every one of them. Booyah. Cycle start, back to work. Saying it's time to load to 60 degrees, so let's do that. That's the way that's going to cut the uh, second line. is finished. Time to move the workpiece down. Alright, so here's what we've got. Look how deep that 60's carving. Whew. Don't think about it though. I've got all my little thin areas there. They'll be okay when I sand. Alright, let's move it. Alright, quick review of what I'm fixing to do. Here is my XY. Down here, that's the next one. I've got to move that one down here to where this one is. And I'm going to show you a trick how to get that perfect every time. Alright, I backed off a little bit so you can see what's going on. Board up, we're gonna put that mark right there exactly underneath the spindle. And the way we're gonna do that is over here, we're gonna to go to work origin. It's still back there, it's parked in the parking position. Go to work origin, which is gonna bring us to that G56. Which will be right over there. Now Slow it down a little bit. We can come right down. All right, this is the, the very important step. Uh, 
really need to pay attention to this. Right now, since I hit the go to origin button, it brought my spindle right back to the original XY that we set for this project, which I also set as a G56. So we know that location is where the line needs to be. We don't move the spindle to the line. We move the line to the spindle. So in order to do that, all I gotta do is bump this uh, board down until that line is exactly underneath that line there. And that is perfection right there. So uh, that's, that's also the benefit of the having a fence, which is what my straight edge is serving as. It just, the only thing you have to worry about is the Y. The X will take care of itself if you, if you have the fence over here. So anyway, now all I gotta do is screw this thing down and get back to carving. All right, so now what we gotta do, I've got it screwed down, go to our F6, and we gotta load this tile two right here. And you can see that's loaded up over there. And we'll have to change the bit which it'll prompt me to do that as soon as I go back to the F2, rewind, and cycle start. It's gonna come over here and prompt me to change the bit. So let's put that quarter inch compression bit back in there and make some man glitter. Cycle start. It went right back over the XY. for the 90 degree groovy genie, put her back in there. Here, hit that circle start and measure a bit. Go to work. Got the 60 degree groovy genie in there. Kind of 
measure and finish this thing. Got her done. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that and learned something. I tried to be as uh, thorough as I could be, and I'm sorry the video went a little longer than they normally do, but there was just uh, a lot of information that needed to be put out there on this process, so I hope I did a good job for you. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. 
I read every one of them and I always reply. So uh, thank y'all for watching. And uh, I do got to give a quick shout out to Walter Ottaway. He sent me my first super thanks late last year and uh, 50 bucks. Thank you, Walter. I appreciate that. Uh, that's just one of the many ways that uh, y'all can help support me, my channel, and my family. So whatever you can do, we would sure appreciate it. Thanks again. See you on the next video.